Flashback time and old technology gaining a whole new following. We're talking about ham radio. The number of licenses at an all-time high and the renewed interest is coming from more than just hobbyists. Jonathan Sari is on the radio with us live from Atlanta. Jonathan. Hi, John. Emergency managers are increasingly turning to ham radio for backup communications during a crisis. Blizzards, hurricanes, tornadoes, natural disasters wreak havoc on modern communications networks. So more and more people are turning to an old solution. Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey. Ham radio. But it is interesting that some of the technology that's been around for 80, 90, 100 years is still relevant. Amateur radio enthusiast John Davis says major disasters such as 9-11 and Hurricane Katrina underscored the need for communications not dependent on landlines or cell towers. It's just another avenue, another opportunity for us to be able to communicate, uh, especially during in a crisis. Emory Healthcare is among a growing number of hospital systems and emergency management agencies developing an amateur radio presence. Ham operators have a permanent station inside the Georgia Emergency Management Agency's operations center. We look at ham radio operators just like GEMA staff, just like DOT staff or Georgia State Patrol staff. They're a critical partner with us. W4IGE. The specially trained volunteers provided critical communications during this winter's ice storms that gridlocked Metro Atlanta. Ham radio will never die. And the quickest means of communication is Morse code. It'll get out when none of this will. So, John, in an era of emails and smartphones, the number of ham radio licenses in this country is at an all-time high, more than 720,000. Back to you. Yeah, I think it was on Jay Leno. They once had a bunch of kids texting against guys doing Morse code, and the Morse and code And Morse code won. They were faster. Great stuff. Jonathan Sari, thanks.